All right, everybody, welcome back in. It's the 21 off season. It's the Kansas City Chiefs, and today it's Eric Fisher and the injury. We may touch on finances today, but we're not going to deep dive on the finances before because before we can really do that accurately, we really need to look at the injury itself, how long he might be gone, and how good he might look in theory when he does step back on the field. So we won't get deep into finances today. It's mostly about the injury. You know, basically what we're hearing right now, and this is kind of all across digital media, print media, any kind of media right now from people who cover sports a lot, is that athletes in general, it takes them about a year between the time they get injured to the time that they actually step back on the field from an Achilles tear and the operation that comes after it, and that a lot of those players never come back, and that a lot of those players are never the same once they do come back. So there's a lot of questions here, and a lot of them can actually get us very concerned when we start to talk about Eric Fisher. And what's kind of happened here is that a lot of folks who cover sports have kind of just dumped that general one-size-fits-all statistics and analytics on top of Eric Fisher and have assumed that he's not coming back at all for 2021. So we're gonna cover that today. First of all, a lot of that negativity really comes from the NBA side of Achilles tears. Now, there's some truth to that, that on the NBA side, when NBA basketball players suffer a true Achilles tear and they have to have the surgery, that for a lot of them, it does take a full year. And one reason for that is because they're not in any hurry to get back for the start of the regular season. It's an 82-game season. A lot of NBA players don't even want to play an 82-game season in the first place. Certainly, when they're not trying, certainly not when they're trying to get their ankle and their Achilles back to full strength. There's just no need. So for a lot of them, they can take their time. They can skip massive parts of the regular season, come back for the last 30 games or so, and in theory, be ready for the playoffs to start playing them at their best so that's where a lot of that negativity really comes from now it is true with several nba players that we've seen that their performance is never the same and one of the real reasons for that is because nba players in order to score and that's usually where the great ones are, are making the difference in order to score they have to have those quick change of direction bursts and the achilles really supports a lot of that that change in direction and that burst of energy that the truly elite athletes have that make them different in some ways from all the rest of us. And that's not the only thing that makes them different, but that's one of the things. And especially we see that in NBA style of play, that change of direction burst. We see it on almost every single time they step on the court for every single second that they are on the court. It's change of direction, change of direction, burst, burst of energy. With NFL players, it's not always the same. Yes, for running backs, they do have to have that a lot. But for a lot of other NFL players, it can be straight line speed, it can be strength, it can be baseline flexibility. There's all kinds of other reasons why the NBA players will see a dip in performance over several seasons after the Achilles injury. And for NFL players, it, it's really just not the same. Now, once you carve away the NBA group, you're left with footballers. And really, there's a very small sample size. It, you know, it ranges for about 10 to 12 players a year in the NFL, and that covers everybody. Basically, anybody who's invited to training camp, it covers guys who are never going to make the team. They're just there to compete for a spot. Most of them have absolutely no chance of even making the practice squad. So once you get past that group of players, the guys who really have no chance to even make the roster in the first place, you're really left with an incredibly small sample size of about three to five players a year of players who actually have a chance of playing in the NFL for anything longer than two or three seasons, who actually have a chance to make an impact, whose names we would actually know. It's an incredibly small sample size. So if you reach back over the past decade, for instance, you know, you're talking anywhere from 35 to 50 players that we're looking at to try to get a feel for how long it takes to come back from an Achilles tear and for how good that player might be. It's an insanely small sample size. So, you know, when we're starting to talk about data or statistics or analytics, there really isn't a whole lot to look at. It's incredibly small, particularly once you cut away the NBA side of that statistic, which is completely different. And once you cut away the players 
who really had no chance of making the roster in the first place. And in a lot of cases, the cold, hard reality for those guys is it doesn't matter what kind of injury they get. If it's an MCI, MCL, if it's a ankle injury of any kind, it doesn't matter what kind it is. It could be the Achilles. For those guys, they don't have the support of the team. They don't have any guaranteed money. They don't really yet have any evidence that they can play on an NFL field. Once they get an injury, reality kind of settles in. The bills start to stack up, and the family pressures start to build up, and they just kind of have to move on in life because they just don't have the support and the money in place to really feel like they can make it on an NFL field after they completely rehab through an Achilles tear or any other injury. So once you cut away those two groups, the NBA group, and the group of NFL athletes who just never even make it onto an NFL field in the first place, you're left with about three to five players a year. And that can be more in some years. It can be less in some years, but that's the average. So over the course of a whole decade, and I know I'm spending a lot of time on this, but it's important if you get behind these analytics here and start to get a feel for this. You're talking about 35 to 50 players here over an entire decade of NFL players whose names we would even know who get any kind of significant playing time like an Eric Fisher. What I've got on the board today is, I think it's 11 of those players. This is just a random sampling. It's a fair random sampling of those 35 to 40, 50 players. And we're gonna go step by step and look at a case study here very quickly of each of these guys and start to get a feel for the Achilles injury. And, and again, the timeline of coming back and of the age of the players and again i would never try to tell eric fisher when to come back at the end of the day it's based on what he and his doctors feel like is the right time to come back but if we're starting to project and get an idea and we want to know on the chief side of things who else should we bring in at tackle what kind of an investment should we make elsewhere what kind of a draft pick should we look at bringing in how much money should we be offering eric fisher how much restructuring should we be looking at doing we have to project and start looking at things like this to try to figure that out. So starting off at the top here, 2011, Leon Hall, defensive back. Leon Hall had an Achilles tear in 2011 and came back in eight months. He was 27 years old at the time. This was his fifth season. Leon Hall had a very good career before this Achilles tear. After that career, he played for seven more seasons, started a lot of games, but he was never quite the same. We saw his interceptions go down after that Achilles tear. He was never quite the same player as he was before. He was productive. He played for seven seasons, but he was not as explosive from that defensive back position, and that was in 2011. The one reason I've got guys here from the past decade is because it gives us a chance to look at their three or four seasons after the injury. And if, if we're dealing with guys from 2018 and 2019, we just don't have a chance to really see what they could really do in the two or three seasons after their injury. Leon Hall, though, was a guy who actually got a little bit worse. He wasn't dramatically worse in terms of, oh, he can't play anymore, but he did come back after eight months. And the TC there is for training camp. That's something we're gonna see all through this list is that basically, for the most part, when guys got injured during the season, they were back for training camp the following year. And that really didn't seem to matter if the injury happened in August or September or November. They were usually back for training camp by the following year. So that was Leon Hall. He did actually get some worse. I guess you could call it 10 to 15% worse. The explosiveness just wasn't there. And so the interceptions went down, even though he was still a good player and a productive player for several more seasons in the NFL. After that, Demarius Thomas, probably a name that everybody would know who's listening. Also in 2011, this was his second season. Demarius Thomas was out for seven months. He was back for the start of the season. Actually, in his first practice back, he broke his finger in practice and missed several more weeks before he actually stepped on the field. But seven months later, Demarius Thomas was back. He was at the age of 24. And of course, if you know anything about Demarius Thomas's career, he had an astounding season. There were six seasons in a row where he basically averaged 95 catches and 1,000 yards. He was insane. He was almost unguardable there for about five of those seasons. Six of those seasons were exceptional years. And this was all completely after 
after his Achilles injury. Terrell Suggs, again, another name that a lot of us would know, he injured his Achilles way back in 2012. That was his 10th season. He came back, and this really set the record here. Terrell Suggs came back after five and a half months. It was insane. It was jaw-dropping. Everybody in the medical community looked at that and just said, wow, how can I do that? And this is really where you start to see the difference right here between players who can play in the NFL and have a long career and players who can't, okay? Their genetics are just different. Their insanely competitive hyperdrive is just different. They are not the same. By the time you add to the fact that a lot of these players at the time of their Achilles injury had multi-million dollar contracts that they already knew were waiting for them when they got back, they already had the support of the team who desperately wanted them to come back, it's just a whole different world than comparing this, these guys to players who never were going to step on an NFL field in the first place in any meaningful way. It's just two different kinds of people. And, and, you know, then you start scaling back to people like me who couldn't step on any kind of a football field for 10 seconds before I got my neck broke, okay? Our genetics are just different. These guys here and the guys like Eric Fisher, they are built different. They are competitively different. Their body structure is different. It is just different all the way through. And Terrell Suggs illustrated that better than anybody. He came back after five and a half months. And again, he came back in mid-season at the age of 30. And for him to be able to do that at the age of 30 and in his 10th NFL season was just insane. He came back and had two more years where he looked just as good. Even at the age of 30, 31 and 32, he looked just as good after the injury as he ever did before the injury. Believe it or not, I think it was 2015, 2016, he actually suffers another Achilles tear and after that, still came back and played some more. Not as good as he did as he did before that. But after his second Achilles tear, he did come back and have more productive seasons even after that. But Terrell Suggs set the record there five and a half months. That's as quick as we've ever seen it done in professional football over the past decade. Brent Grimes is another guy. 2012, I'll go back to Jason Peters in a minute. Brent Grimes is a guy, defensive back. He actually was better after the Achilles injury. He suffered that in his sixth season at the age of 29. He was out for 10 months. Again, you see a common theme here. He was back for training camp of the following season, which suggests, and this is interesting, when a guy comes back for training camp and he didn't need to come back any sooner, you wonder, could he have come back after eight months or seven months? And the answer to that is often yes, and we'll see that as we go through these guys here. We've already seen it here with Thomas at seven months, with Terrell Suggs at five and a half months. We're going to see it with a couple other guys here in a second. They can often come back. Usually it's a deadline that brings them back at whatever time they come back. It could be the start of the season. It could be a late December deadline that they're facing in order to get an accrued season. For most of the guys, it's just training camp. So Brent Grimes came back for training camp after 10 flat months at the age of 29, and he was actually better. The following three seasons where he came back, um, he made all pro, all pro, all pro. His interceptions were up. He was tremendous, tremendous athlete, tremendous recovery, just an exceptional deal, and all of that at the age of 29. Eric Fisher just did hit the age of 30 right at the start of January, so he's one year older than Brent Grimes. And you would think in theory at least, and again, there's not massive amounts of data to support this because the, the sample group is so small, but you would think in theory that defensive backs would have to have a little bit more of that, that explosive power, that explosive direction change than an offensive lineman would. We could, we could debate that, I guess, but in theory, a defensive back like Brent Grimes would need that change of direction, explosiveness more than an offensive lineman typically would. Uh, back to Jason Peters. Jason Peters, same year, 2012, suffered an Achilles tear. A tear. He was out for 14 months. But here's the story on Jason Peters. Jason Peters, about five or six weeks after his first Achilles tear and after his operation, was using a walker to get around. The walker, which was rated for 500 pounds, actually broke while he was using it. He's 340 pounds. He basically falls flat on his face, 
re-injures the Achilles the second time right there. He later takes the Walker Company to court, wins the lawsuit, wins $2 million in that. But because he tore it two times in about six weeks, that is the reason that he was out for 14 months. Jason Peters, a name a lot of you probably are familiar with this, did that in his ninth season when he was 30 years old. Before the injury, he had one All-Pro and five Pro Bowls. After the injury, he had another All-Pro season and four more Pro Bowl seasons. He was almost identically the same after the injury as he was before the injury. And he too was 30 years old and he too was in his ninth season, uh, roughly ninth season when all of this was happening. This was in the spring that it happened to him. Quite an interesting story there for Jason Peters. He came back as an offensive lineman and was just as good after as he ever was before. Um, you move down to Vince Wilfork. Vince Wilfork in 2013 did this in his 10th tenth uh, season. He was 32 years old. It took him 10 months to come back again for training camp. Could he have come back earlier? Probably, but he didn't have to. He was there for training camp after 10 months. He was actually worse. Vince Wilfork Maybe due to age, maybe due to weight, don't know. Vince Wilfork was actually worse. Now, he did come back and play more and start more seasons. I think he had two more full seasons where he actually started, but he was never quite the same. The, the dominance just wasn't there, and, and you could ask the question, why? And we don't really know. Again, injuries affect different athletes in different ways. Sometimes age can be a factor. Sometimes... The injury is just worse for certain athletes than it is for others. But for Vince Wilfork, even though he did come back, he did play, I think, three or four more seasons. He did start for two more seasons. He just was not as good after he wasn't as dominant after the Achilles tear as he was before. Michael Crabtree did it in 2013 in his fifth year. He was 26 years old. He came back in six months as well. And this is highly impressive for Michael Crabtree as well. When you're talking five or six months, you're right there at the low end. Generally speaking, and I'll hit the time frame here for some of these, for just people in general, when you tear an Achilles and you get the operation, basically the idea is you just stay off of it completely for anywhere from six weeks to three months. That's the time frame that just completely, totally, 100% stay off of it, give it the rest. After that time frame, however long it is for you, as an athlete or as a person in general, you spend the next several weeks and months just trying to walk on it and do what would be considered normal things. After about six months, you can basically do anything that you feel comfortable doing as a person, as an athlete, whatever you feel comfortable doing. And we see that right here with Terrell Suggs, five and a half months, Michael Crabtree, six months. We've seen these guys come back and, and it can be done. I'm not suggesting that Eric Fisher should do it. I don't even think that he should do it. But we have seen guys do it five and a half months and six months. Now, Michael Crabtree, I've got him written as the same. He was the same in that he started for several more seasons. His catch numbers never went down. Matter of fact, he had several more good seasons just like before of catches. What was slightly different from Michael Crabtree is he wasn't as explosive. We saw his yards per catch go down from about 13 and a half on average to about 10 and a half on average. So that deep threat speed, that explosiveness was not there the same way from Michael Crabtree before as it was after, but he still made a lot more money after the Achilles injury. He was still highly effective. He still started a ton of games. He was still incredibly productive. He was a guy that teams wanted on their team because he was still so effective as an athlete, as a wide receiver. And that's Michael Crabtree. Derek Johnson, a name I'm sure a lot of you will be familiar with. In 2014, this was his 10th season. Derek Johnson, at the age of 32, tore his Achilles, had to have the surgery, came back 10 months later for training camp. Possibly could have come back sooner. We don't know. He just That was when he needed to come back, and that's when he did come back. He was the same for one season. The next season that he came back, he put up just as many tackles, just as many sacks. Basically, statistically, he was the same person. You fast forward another season, and it looked like old age started to catch up with him. That would have been his 12th season at the age of about 34, 
and then that's when you saw the drop off. But he did have, even at these late stages of a career, he did have another full complete season in which he looked like the identical same player as he did before the injury, and that was Derek Johnson for the Chiefs. Robert Mathis, edge rusher, in his 12th season at the age of 33, he was out for 10 months. He actually came back worse. Now, Robert Mathis had two more seasons where he was very productive, started a lot of games during those two seasons, but he was not the same. It's fair to ask, excuse me, <coughs> it's fair to ask for Robert Mathis, 12th season at the age of 33, was it injury? Was it age? Was it both? It was probably both. But he still came back after 10 months, and he was still very productive for those next two seasons, even at the advanced ages of 33 and uh, 12 seasons. D'Angelo Hall was a guy who came back worse. But again, age of 31, 11th season, defensive back. He's, he, D'Angelo Hall really was never the same after this injury. He was good leading up to it. After the injury, he was just never the same. You have to ask the question again with Hall, was it that age and the number of seasons here that he had played, 11th season, age of 31, or was it strictly the injury? It was probably both here for D'Angelo Hall playing defensive back. He was never the same. I don't think he ever started but a handful of games after that. He did play for four more seasons, but he was just never the same player. It was a very clear drop-off even from what he was before. Corey Peters, a name that not a lot of us may, may know, defensive tackle. He was never great, never an all-pro, never a pro bowler, but he was consistently starting. In his sixth season, he was 27 years old. He came back 11 months later. Could have been sooner, but he came back for training camp. The, the things that you see consistently here is most of these guys made it back for training camp the following year. Usually that was not anywhere from 9 to 11 months. Had training camp been dealt, dialed back earlier, many of them could have come back sooner. We saw that here with eight months, seven months, five and a half months, six months. Not unusual at all. Corey Peters came back. He was the same basically after as he ever was before. He wasn't dominant before. He wasn't dominant after. He was productive and good starter before. He was a good and productive starter after 11 months for him. Keanu Neal, one of the most recent ones, Again, this isn't a comprehensive list. It's not an exhaustive list. It's just a good case study sample. Keanu Neal, in his fourth season at the age of 24 in 2019, he was out for nine months, came back for training camp. He was the same. He graded out the same. He did have one Pro Bowl before in three or four seasons before the injury. He's only played one full season since the injury. He started. Um, when you roll over to Pro Football Focus, he basically graded out the same in 2020 that he did in 2018. So basically he came back the same after the injury as he ever did before the injury. So the common themes that we find here, and again, we don't have a, a large amount of data to sift through. You just kind of have to get a feel for it. In almost no cases did any of these players take anywhere near a year to come back. When they did, like Jason Peters, it's because he tore the darn thing twice in about five or six, five or six weeks. There's another player, it may have been Hall, I can't remember, who also tore it in a very short time span. Give me one second here and I'll look and, and see it. Um, sorry, I'm looking right here. D'Angelo Hall. Yeah, D'Angelo Hall actually also, and he was a guy who never came back the same. He retore it five weeks later when he was still not even in the rehab stages, which may have been also a reason that he was never the same after that. The guys who were never the same after that, who just weren't as good, there's about four of them on this list. Three of them were in their 11th season, in their 12th season, and in their 10th season. So they were pretty deep into careers. They were significantly, they were more like 31, 32 years old. Eric Fisher just turned 30. Eric Fisher just finished his eighth season. He will be in his ninth season. So when you start asking about these guys and looking at Eric Fisher, we, we understand the small sample size. Basically, after about six months, for the most part, an athlete can do whatever he or she is comfortable doing. They're all different. I wouldn't fuss about Eric Fisher missing the entire season if that's what he feels like he needs to do in order to get all the way back, in order to strengthen that Achilles area to the way he wants to. I wouldn't fuss about that at all. I would have no criticism of that. But in general, when you start looking at these guys here, the guys who are a lot like Eric Fisher in terms of body type, 
in terms of NFL talent, in terms of genetics, in terms of competitiveness, in terms of they already know that they have money waiting on them whenever they step back onto the NFL football field. Generally speaking, it's about eight to nine months, and we see guys come back at six and seven months, and that's not unusual either to see it right around seven months. So Eric Fisher got injured right at the end of January. I would not expect him back for training camp. That would be about five and a half months. That would be matching the quickest we've ever seen it. I would fully not be at all surprised if we see him at mid-September. That's at seven and a half months, and that's pretty normal. For the guys who needed to come back sooner, we've seen several of these guys come back at seven or eight months, so it wouldn't surprise me at all. And that's why I'm not gonna back down off of what I said in the last video. It wouldn't surprise me at all to see Eric Fisher back for the start of the season in mid-September. That to me would seem very much within the realm of feasibility. While I wouldn't criticize Eric Fisher for missing the entire season, it would shock me to no end to see him actually miss the entire season. It would also shock me to see him come back after Thanksgiving. If, in all reality, I would expect him, even if he's not fully comfortable to be back at the start of the season in mid-September, I would expect him to be back in sometime in October, maybe to miss about four games-ish, something like that. I'm not guaranteeing that, I'm not predicting that. He could come back sooner, he could come back later, he could miss the whole season, but if you're starting to try to get a feel for this, and you wanna ask questions like, should we be looking somewhere else for another tackle, and what do we do money-wise with Eric Fisher and his contract, you have to answer this question first. When do we think that he might actually be back? And, and reasonably, there's no reason to think that he couldn't come back early in the season, September to October. That's very reasonable. A full year basically is a doomsday scenario. So if you're hearing a year, as I've been hearing from different places, that is like a worst case scenario. It just generally does not take NFL players of this skill level an entire year to get back on the football field and for the most part yeah they got a little bit of rust to knock off but for the most part players at eric fisher's age and at his skill set and at his age level they usually look the same after the injury as they do before the injury that's the general expectation i would not expect him to look any better certainly not at that age the only couple of players we saw look better were demarius thomas and Brent Grimes, both of whom were earlier in their career as opposed to later. So I wouldn't expect him to look any better, but I would be surprised if he actually looks dramatically worse coming off of this injury. And I would also be surprised if it takes an entire year for him to get back on the football field. I do not expect him to miss any more than probably four to six games and maybe not even that. I, I would not be shocked at all if he's on the football field at the start of the season that would be seven and a half months right in the wheelhouse of when we've seen some of these guys come back seven and a half months not a stretch at all that's not being too optimistic that's not putting on red colored sunglasses to try to look at this this is a realistic look at what we want to do with eric fisher if we want to start handing out money so we'll talk about the restructuring we'll talk about maybe um an extent a contract extension on the next video but in general, I would have no problem expecting Eric Fisher to come back. How long do I think he can keep playing? I think he can play for another five or six seasons very easily. And I would suspect, in general, on average, as we look through these guys, probably two or three more good seasons where he basically looks like the Eric Fisher that we all know him to be. Now, keep in mind, he just had his best season ever. 2020 was clearly, when you look at the film, his best season that he's ever had. Maybe he won't be quite that good, but I have no reason to think that in 2021, especially after he gets kind of back in the groove and back up to game speed, maybe after Thanksgiving, I have no trouble expecting Eric Fisher to probably have two or three more seasons, just like we saw him have in 2017, 18, and 19. Very consistent, very solid there at left tackle. I, I would have no problem. So we'll talk about the money in another video. And again, there are no guarantees. Yes, it's a very real possibility. Sometimes athletes do not come back, but in general, they do. And um, so, all right, I think it's enough. We've spent 30 minutes on this. Thank you for listening. If you're still watching, we'll see you next time. Goodbye.